Welcome back everyone to uh, this lesson on solving nonlinear equations using open methods. In the previous videos, we uh, introduced the newton raphson method and the secant method uh, to solve uh, problems that have only one variable. In this uh, video, we will introduce the, uh, uh, the method, uh, the newton raphson method, to use it with uh, problems that have more than one uh, variable. Uh, in uh, these problems, we will be solving uh, a set of functions. We will be finding the solution of a set of functions uh, that are uh, subject to uh, uh, an equal number of uh, variables. Uh, uh, this uh, actually the approach to uh, to create this set of uh, equations or to solve this set of equations is through the Taylor's uh, expansion or the Taylor's series. So if we have n functions with n variables, uh, we will uh, uh, select a, a general one, fi, and expand it using the uh, Taylor series. Uh, for Taylor, Taylor series for uh, multiple variables can be uh, presented uh, this way uh, in which uh, f of i uh, or the i function uh, for the k plus 1 set of uh, x's is equal to f i, the same function, at the k uh, variables, at the variables uh, um, at the kth iteration plus the changes we have in the axis times the derivative of the function with respect to each of the uh, variables. Again, uh, here we have uh, the function at any value uh, or at any set of uh, variables x1, x2 until xn is presented by uh, the same function uh, of uh, the set of variables at the previous guess or the previous iteration plus uh, some terms. These terms are all presented by the derivative of the function with respect to the variable multiplied by the change of the value of the variable we are talking about. So uh, we can replace these x1 minus x1k, here it should be x1k plus 1 of course, uh, by uh, delta x's and rewrite the relation. Uh, again, uh, this may look so general. Let's try to write it in uh, a matrix form or in a vector form, which will give us that the value of the function at any iteration is equal to the value of the function at the previous iteration. Uh, plus uh, the slopes of the function or the derivatives of the function, the partial derivatives of the function with respect to each of the variables, multiplied by a vector of the changes in the value of the variables. If we repeat this for every function, fi, then we get a set of equations presenting the value of the function at the new values of the variables uh, is equal to the values of the function at the old values of the variables plus a matrix, a matrix of derivatives. Uh, each row in that uh, uh, matrix presents the derivatives of the function with respect to uh, each variable. So the first row will be the derivative of the first function, the second row will be the derivative of the second function, and so on until we reach the nth function and we differentiate it with respect to each of the variables. Uh, this matrix is called the Jacobian matrix. Uh, then this Jacobian matrix is multiplied by the change of uh, the values of the function. Uh, to find the roots of the functions, what we do is we set this vector equal to zero. If we set this vector equal to zero, then we are kind of forcing this equation to be equal to zero. Uh, we know the value of the function at the previous iteration, so uh, the, func uh, the problem becomes finding how much should we change the variables we have. Here you, uh, you see this, moving the uh, values of the function to the uh, left-hand side. Uh, 
then inverting this matrix will give us how much change do we need to have in each of the variables to get to the solution. Of course, this becomes another or a new guess or new uh, approximation for the solution that can be used several more times uh, to find the, uh, value, uh, the set of values of the variables that will make uh, the functions, all the functions simultaneously equal to uh, zero. So, uh, as a matter of fact, we are looking for uh, uh, the, uh, we are iterating until these deltas become too small. Uh, well, which one and how small? Uh, it can be uh, replaced by uh, what we have here. We get the uh, error squared by multiplying the vector by itself and checking whether this is less than the allowed tolerance or not. Uh, but to get from one step, the case step, to the following step, what we do is we just add the changes to the x's we already have, to the variables we already have. We will demonstrate this using a two-variable um, uh, problem uh, to, uh, for simplicity, uh, but this is extremely general and extremely useful. Uh, you can use it to for any function. Mutterovson, as we said before, is a, a very powerful method. It can be used for uh, so many problems to find the solution, and it finds a solution in uh, most of uh, the cases. So uh, uh, now uh, we can also even modify the uh, method we used. Uh, instead of using the derivatives, we can just find uh, the derivative approximate value of the derivative by introducing a small change in the jth variable. Uh, this uh, gets us back here uh, to this matrix. So instead of using the uh, derivative, if we don't have the derivative, which as we said before, is in most of the practical cases, you don't have an explicit function for the derivative. So we can replace the derivative here by a change in uh, the variable. We will also demonstrate that in another uh, program. So uh, now let's uh, have an example uh, uh, on how to apply the newton Russell method for multiple variables. Then we will see also how to write a program that uh, implements the um, Newton-Raphson method for multidimensional uh, problems. So, uh, see you next video.